Hi families, my name is Holly Compton. I'm the district math coach for Manhattan Beach in grades TK to 6. And I am going to work on a subtraction problem with your child today. But we're going to start nudging toward um, more first grade numbers. So we are at the end of the school year. I'm sure we're all looking forward to being done with quarantine school. Well, homeschool, all of you parents deserve the biggest break. Um, so we're going to start off with a number talk, and we're going to make the numbers a little bit harder this time. Um, so your child may or may not be able to solve this mentally, but we're going to try to get some good strategies to come out of this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to ask your child is, what would 15 minus 9 be? So I would expect to, to hear some kids thinking about a 10 frame or maybe even two 10 frames. So they probably know that if you fill up an entire 10 frame, that's 10. And if you fill in half of another one, that's five. And together that makes 15. So they might think about that. And then they might visualize nine of them coming off. Either they'll say, I could cross off this whole 10 frame except for that one. And I would have these dots left. Or more than likely, I think some kids might think about nine like this. Finger math is so important. We have to encourage kids to use their fingers. There's a spot in our brain that's meant only for fingers. The more they use it, the better they become and the better they memorize their facts. So encourage those fingers. Okay, so I'm going to guess that some kids are thinking about nine like this. Nine is made up of a, up of a five and a four. See how important this is going to be? So they're going to think, oh, hey, I could take off 15 minus 5, and that would give me 10. And you can actually see that going on in the 10 frame. So we had 15, and we just took off those 5. That makes 10 left. Then we have to take off 4 more. So we had 10, and we're going to take off 4. 1, 2, 3, Four. Maybe they'll do something like that mentally, or maybe they'll actually need a tool for this. I'm not sure. Um, depends on who your child is. So then they'll find out, oh, I have six left. Um, another thing they may do is actually add up. So some kids actually never end up solving a subtraction problem because they just think, hey, if I know how to add for, or count from 9 to 15, I could solve it that way. So some of your kids may realize if they count from 9 to 15, they will find the answer. So 9 plus 1 is 10. Yes, they probably won't draw this, draw this on a number line, even though number lines are really important. They probably don't know how to draw it. I'm just showing you how we might think about it. Okay, so 9 plus 1 is 10. And we have to get from 10 to 15. And that would add 5 more. Now our answer is right here in the hops. So we had to add six. So those are two ways your child may approach solving this. Um, again, it's going to get a little bit harder, which I'm hoping will be more challenging for your child. So you, wa you want things to actually be somewhat challenging. You want to go through that pr productive struggle and stretch your brain. That's what we call it in class. We call it stretching our brains. Okay, so then we're going to have this story, sand crabs. Mila was collecting sand crabs at the beach. She found 16 sand crabs. Then a wave came and washed away seven crabs. Okay, we are not telling them that this is a subtraction problem because they can imagine having 16 crabs, a wave washing away some crabs, and then there are some left. So we don't tell them it's a uh, subtraction. They have to visualize. Then a wave came and washed away seven crabs. How many crabs did, did Mila have left? So I'm going to demonstrate how we might solve the middle number set today. So this was the middle number set. So they may do something like what we did before. Or you know what? They may draw 16 crabs like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Totally fine. That is an absolutely acceptable strategy for kindergarten. So 16 crabs. And then the water washes away seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and then they count and see, oh, nine are left. They may do that. They may do um, 16 minus seven, and they may say, well, if I did 16 minus six first, I'd end up with 10, and I'd have one left to take off of the seven. So 10 minus one is nine. Again, we are edging into first grade territory. This will probably be a challenge. Don't forget your child can still choose the first number set. The first number set is a kindergarten number set, and it's totally acceptable for them to do this. And please, encourage finger math and encourage drawings if they need to. It's totally fine. All right, time to go get those kids. See you back here in just a second. Hi, kids. It's Mrs. Compton, and we are back. Are you ready to do a number talk with me? I hope so. And I'm really hoping I can challenge your brains a little bit with this number talk. So before we start, do you remember this? I bet you do. This is called a, tell me, you're right, it's a 10 frame. And, but I have two 10 frames here, don't I? So if I fill all of this up, that would be 10. And if I added 10 more, I would have 20. So you might actually use something like this in your mind today while you're looking at solving this problem today. So I hope that it stretches our brains out. I hope it's a little bit hard for you because we want math to be a little challenging, right? Okay, so I'm gonna ask you to think about what this is. 15 minus nine. Okay, so let's all stop to think about it. strategy you can put your thumb up right here okay. you have two ways of solving all right on the count of three I want you to tell me what you think the answer is are you ready one two three tell me mmm let's see did some of you say six I'm gonna find out okay so I'm gonna guess some of your strategies. And you have to tell me in the comments if I guessed one of your strategies right or not. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna guess some of you used your fingers and your toes. Okay, so I'm gonna guess one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And you know five and five makes 10. And then I'm gonna guess you said, I have to add on some toes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now how many toes, or fingers and toes do we have? We have five, 10, 15. That was our starting number. And maybe you thought to yourself, hmm, I have to take off nine. So I'm gonna take off all five of one, and then six, seven, eight, nine. And it left you with six. Fingers. Okay, I have another guess. I'm gonna guess some of you thought about this. Did you think about this? Let's check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm not there yet. I have to go all the way to 15. Okay, I know that's a 10 and that's a five, and 10 and five together make a teen number, and I know you guys have been working on your teen numbers all year, so 10 and five make 15. And we have to take off nine. I'm gonna guess that maybe some of you thought about nine, and you said, I'm gonna take off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, and you counted how many were left. Was that your strategy? I'm trying to guess here. Can you tell me if I got it yet? Okay, I have one more guess. Are you ready? <sighs> okay, I think this, this could be it, I don't know. 15 minus nine. I'm gonna guess some of you thought about nine like this. Did some of you think about it on your fingers? 
and you saw that a nine is made up of five fingers and four fingers. Mm. So I wonder if you broke apart the nine into a five and a four. I'm wondering if you thought I could do 15, what if I draw a number line? 15, take off five, one, two, three, four, five. So that's one big hop of five, take off five, and you land at 10. Did anyone do that? That would be an awesome strategy. I don't know, these are all good. And then, so you said, okay, take off five, and then you have to take off four more. One, two, three, four. Okay, so 10, nine, eight, seven, six. I don't know. Did I guess anyone's strategy? You have to tell me. I like when people write to me in the comments. Okay. Are you guys ready to see our story for today? I'm so excited because I got to see this little person on Zoom today. This person is from Miss Crumb's class. We're gonna say hi to Mrs. Crumb's class. Hi, Mrs. Crumb, we hope you are doing well. All right, so this person that we're gonna say hi to is Mila. Hi, Mila, we miss you. We hope to see you. Sometime soon. All right, I'm gonna cover my numbers just for right now. No sneak peeks. Okay, this story is all about sand crabs. Have you ever gone to the beach and collected sand crabs? Oh, they're kind of gross, but they're kind of fun to collect. All right, so Mila was collecting sand crabs at the beach. She found, hmm? sand crabs. Then a wave came and washed away hmm, crabs. Okay, let's stop and think real quick in our heads. So let's imagine ourselves at the beach with Mila maybe. Mila's collecting her sand crabs and she has a whole bunch, but then a wave came and washed some away. Whew. Okay, now we're going to try to figure out how many crabs did Mila have left. Okay, so I'm going to show you your just right number sets and we're going to read the story again. You might choose today six and two, or maybe you'll choose 16 and seven, or ooh, I threw in a big set here, but only pick this set if you feel like you have a really good strategy. 26 and 17. All right, let's check it out with 16 and seven. All right, let's try to imagine Mila at the beach. She's collecting her sand crabs. She found 16 sand crabs. Kinda gross, kinda cool. Then a wave came and washed away seven of those sand crabs. How many crabs did Mila have left? Okay. I hope you can remember or make that picture in your mind. Remember, read it again if you need to understand the story a bit more. Check in with your teacher and see how you should turn this work into her. I miss you guys. I hope to see you soon. Bye.